Hello, and welcome to my first in a series of lessons on how to render multi-paths into an EXR file in Mentoray. What I've got here is a basic, just a generic setup with a few different objects that uh, have no inherent meaning whatsoever, just to illustrate a few different shading properties, and uh, a, a very simple setup in a kind of like a studio psych type of environment uh, as a background, uh, one area light, uh, and that's really about it. Um, so with that, let's just look, let me get back to my camera uh, view that I want to render to, and I've already got some materials set up in the Hypershade that we're going to apply to these services, and then we will uh, begin exploring some rendering. So with that said, let me just open up the Hypershade. And what I've got here is I've got a few uh, mental ray materials and some Maya materials so that we can kind of see the differences between the, how the two react into the multipath system. And you should know that if you're going to be rendering in mental ray into the multipath system, that you're going to always need to use one of the shaders that ends in passes. So for instance, we've got the MI Car Paint Phenomenon X passes. We've got the MI Metallic Paint X passes. We've got the MI Material X passes. And that happens to be the shader that we're using. And I've got three of those that I've just basically set to some preset it preset defaults uh, within the system. You can find those over here. And like for instance I've just made that one chrome. I've come down here and I've used the glass thick on that one. And on this one, the red, I've used the uh, glossy finish. Right now, I've got some mental, I mean, some Maya materials over here. The, they're all Lambert surfaces with different shading qualities. So, for instance, I've got one where I've turned the color all the way down and pumped up the incandescence. I've got a pure white for the psych and uh, a blue so that we can look at some color. So, with that said, let's just apply some of these shaders. So, with this one, I'm going to want to apply just the pure white to the psych. I'm going to want to apply the blue to the sphere. I'm going to want to apply the glass to the glass, the chrome to this shape, whatever it is, the incandescence to this plane, and uh, the cube, I want to apply this red. Now also inside this glass, let me just kind of turn it to wireframe real quickly. I'm going to select it like that. I'm going to deselect it, and there's a little tiny nugget of color in there that I'm also going to add that blue to. Okay, so let's just go back to our uh, camera view. Okay, so we're almost beginning to get ready rendering. Uh, I've also got an area light already set up. I'll go over some of the settings in that area light in a moment. And I want to just look at the render settings real fast. And basically, I've just kept everything very generic, except for the only thing that I've done is I've uh, turned off enable default light uh, under the common tab. And under the quality tab, I have uh, just set it to one instead of zero. No, 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 no other changes other than that. So with that said, let's just save here. And let's uh, snap off a rendering and see what we get. Okay, well, as you can see, we've got our rendering here. We've got basically a very generically lit scene. Uh, we're getting some shadows from the area light that are actually not too bad. Uh, you can see all of our shaders are working, and we've got no bounce light, so we're just getting basically acting like a very just direct lighting from that area light. So with that said, let's go and open up some of the settings, and let's begin to tweak our settings a little bit to get something a little bit nicer, and uh, then we'll quickly move on to uh, the multi-pass system. So with this said, I'm going to open up the render settings. And the first thing that I'm going to want to do is under the common tab, I'm going to want to change the image format from Maya IFF to Open EXR. Okay? Now, under the quality tab, let's just bump that up to a 2 for now, not 22, right? And let's set it to. Uh, you know, for right now, we'll use Box with some of the more final renders. We'll eventually switch to Mitchell. Uh, well, why don't I put it on Mitchell now? It'll slow things down, but I'll pause the render. I'll pause the video while I'm rendering. Now, under Frame Buffer, we're going to want to open that up. Now, 
we're going to go over this a little bit in depth later, but we're going to want to obviously leave the gamma at 1 and take the data type and move that down to RGBA float 4 times 32 bit. Okay, what that's going to give you is it's going to give you your 32 bit EXR with an alpha channel and any layer that we put into the multipath system will be embedded like a layer, like a Photoshop file that will be able to recombine in post. Okay, for the indirecting, indirect lighting, I'm just going to uh, turn on some final gather. For right now, I'm just going to set the accuracy down to 50 so we move kind of quick, right? I'm going to set the secondary diffuse balances to 2. Right, we'll just keep rebuild on for right now, final gather quality, and I'm going to put that filter at 1. Okay, and that's really uh, basically all that we need to really do. Uh, well, actually, we're going to let's take that reflections, put that to 2, put that to 2, and put the max trace depth to 3. So it'll, it'll kind of turn off either one if it needs it or not, right? Now, the last thing that we're going to need to do is come back under the quality setting and under the ray trace quality, under ray tracing down here, we've already got ray tracing on, but we can see that our reflections and our refractions and our max trace depth are set too low. So I'm going to actually set these a little bit higher than the final gather ones, and I'll set this to something like that, 3, 3, and 6. So uh, again, this isn't a ray tracing lesson, but it has to do with how many rays can pass through a surface. You have to have it set high enough that it can pass through multiple surfaces and bounce back to the camera. So now we got that said, let's just save it and let's snap off a render and see what the difference is. You can see that we're building the final gather pretty quick. Right? We can already see that the lighting is vastly improved, just the final gather. We're getting some bleed in the final gather. So with that said, I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back when the render is done. Okay, well the rendering's done, and you can see that we're getting a little bit of color bleed down in there. The render's looking a little bit better than it was before. Uh, our incandescent plane is really not casting too much final gather, and uh, chrome in the glass look basically okay. Uh, the blue ball is doing what it needs to do. Uh, we need to get a little bit more light in the scene uh, with the area light, so let's just make some quick adjustments, and then we'll... Uh, snap off another render and then we should then be ready pretty much to set up the uh, scene for multi-pass. So I'm going to just look through this light and I'm going to pull back a little bit and then I'm going to actually angle it out a little bit more and I'm going to increase the size of the area light. Now I've got a few mental ray shaders attached to this area light that uh, I'm going to adjust. Uh, I'm not going to get too into the details of them, but if you'd like to know more then you can look at my uh, 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 tutorials on lighting and mental ray with physical lights and black bodies and all that kind of good stuff. So if we look in the hypershade, I'll just sh show you real quick. Okay. I'm going to come into the lights, I'm going to grab this area light, I'm going to graph it. And you can see that I've got a physical light into the light shader attribute of the area light, which basically makes the light behave physically correct. And I've got an MIAB black body controlling the intensity of the light and the color temperature. So I'm just going to actually raise that intensity up to 3 uh, uh, 100,000, which sounds like a lot, but this light sometimes can take very large numbers. Okay, so with that said, we've made some minor adjustments in the light. I'm going to come back to our render camera, and I'm going to select that plane, and I'm going to go over to its shader, and the incandescent shader, and under the incandescence, I'm going to select that. Whoops, excuse me, and I'm going to pull that back up, and I've got it set to HSV, and under the value section, I'm just going to pump that up to 4. Okay. So if you you know you can see hue saturation value and the value is four. Okay. With that said, let's just actually open up, snap off another render and see what we get. We'll look at it a little bit while I'm uh, and then I'll turn it off and pause. But you can see the scene's already brighter, getting some more clear color bleed the light spreading back a little bit farther into our psych. I think this will be good. So I'm going to pause here and I'll be back when the render is done. 
Okay, well the render is done and we can see that we're getting basically what I thought that we'd be getting. Uh, we can see that we've got a much brighter scene. We're getting some of the back of the psych or the background. Our incandescent plane is casting some uh, more bright uh, incandescence onto the floor from uh, the increasing the value of the, the incandescence. Our glass and our chrome are working basically correct except for that we're probably going to need to increase some of the refraction uh, uh, passes because we're not quite seeing through all the way and our final gather is a little bit splotchy so with that said I'm gonna make a few adjustments so I think I'm probably gonna also turn the area light down a tiny little bit we'll set up the final rendering and then we'll move on to part two setting up the multi-pass okay so with that said I'm just gonna select this area light and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower that intensity I think I'm gonna go back down to 200,000 okay Everything else was basically okay, with the exception of the render settings, so I'm going to open back up the render settings here. I'm going to increase our final gather quality right now to about 100 or so. I think that that'll be okay. Right? Everything else I'm going to leave exactly the same, except for the one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on Enable Map Visualizer so that we can actually write out the final gather to disk and go from there. Okay. So, And then the other last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the quality setting and under this ray tracing attributes I'm going to turn these to 10, 10, and 12. And it will pull, it, even though I'm only setting it to 12, like if it only needs four refraction rays and it needs uh, uh, eight reflection ray, refraction rays, it, it, it'll adjust but it'll never do more than 12. So even though this adds up to 20, I'm saying don't ever do more than 12 and that's basically what that setting is. And uh, we've got it set to Mitchell which is uh, pretty good and we're going to increase the quality sampling to 3. Okay, so this render is going to take considerably longer uh, to render and but other than that I think that we're going to be basically okay oh I think the last thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to take the shadows and I'm going to put that up to four for now uh, that'll give it four passes to, so that we just make sure that we get all the way through that glass okay the last thing that I'm going to probably do here is I'm going to come back to this area light and I'm just going to bump these up a little bit I'm going to take that to 16 I'm going to set that to 8 to 8 and I'm going to set the low samples to 4. High samples up, 16, sorry, that's what I meant. That's what I'm going to do. Low samples is 4, the high sample limit will be 8, and the high samples are set to 8. So this again is going to increase the rendering time, but it's going to dramatically increase the quality of the shadows on that light. So let's save the scene. Let's uh, open up the render view. This is our last render. Let's put it into the uh, into the graph. And let's snap off another render. Now, this is going to take considerably longer, so I'm just going to pause here. We see the final gather has started, and that's that. Okay, the render is done, and we can see that the render looks much better. The lighting's a little bit more equalized, not so hot. I'm getting uh, some of the reflections uh, and refractions of the this shape through the glass. Uh, everything's looking pretty crisp. Uh, the, the splotchiness of the final gather seems to basically be gone. Um, so I think we're ready to set up the multi-pass uh, system. So uh, I want to make one quick note here, which is that I've been, as you've seen, I've been under the quality setting, I've been setting the filter to Mitchell, which is great for stills, but if you were rendering an animation, chances are you'd probably want to set it to Gaussian, which uh, is a little bit better for animations. Mitchell's a little bit hard, uh, but it's great for stills. And uh, the other last thing that I'm going to want to do, because you'll see here that uh, we've baked out the final gather to disk, so we can see the final gather point. So under the indirect lighting tab, I'm going to come down to final gather and uh, under the final gather we can see that we've got the map and I'm going to put it on uh, off. Okay, great. With that said, let's move on to part two, setting up the system for multi-pass rendering.